Well, we've got our first paddock of the rotation set up for 2023. Uh, we're starting this time on the west side of the field on the north end. And we're going to work our way south and then we'll flip over to the east side of the field, which was our main field last year. Um, so what we're having to do a little bit different this time is I've got a, we've got our midline fence here that works uh, not only to feed our power, but it separates the two fields from each other. Uh, and it'll be one side of the alleyway. So we've got to turn this around. I've got to bring the sheep from all the way at the far corner down yonder. I'll have to come across the end and then come up in the middle here. I don't want them to have access to that part of the field yet since we're starting on this north end. So I've got to make an alleyway right down through here. Um, and one side of it will be the midline, and, and I'll set up a couple of wires here uh, to make the alley so I can get them down here to eat, and then we'll work our way south. So that's what we're setting up today. Getting everything ready for next week. That Saturday morning, we made pretty good progress last night on getting the alleyway set up here, but we ran out of daylight. So today we're going to pin a couple of T-posts. So we can get some tension on this and make sure it stays it's a pretty good <clears throat> haul up to the other end of the field so we need to put some tension on it to keep the the strands up uh, all the way so we're gonna get that done this morning <laughs> Got that in.
Well, the time has come. It's taken a lot of work to get everything ready in the pasture uh, for this year's rotation. And we're doing a little different this year. So over here, we had a, right from here at the end of this post, all the way over to there. You can't see that green gate uh, over yonder, but we used to have a little alleyway that ran down just through there. You can kind of see the difference in the grass where it ran. Uh, and that confused the sheep a whole lot. Um, and so we decided to take that down and do things a little different this year. So we still have our regular netting that we're using here that goes back over to the gate that goes down to the barn. So that will, since we're starting on this side of the field this year instead of this side, we'll start this alleyway. So that'll get them over here to the midline. And then this might be a challenge, but I think it will work. See if you can see that in the camera. Yeah. So we've got another piece of netting that's going around this brush pile and ties into the end of the alleyway right over there. And we've got an alley that runs up along the midline down to the far paddock on the north end, which is where we're going to start them this year. So it's a little bit, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, they've never taken this route before, so it'll be new to them. But I think. What they don't like is, is sharp turns, uh, hairpin turns, uh, right angles, and that kind of stuff. They just, it confuses them. So this, this netting here is making a nice slow sweep around this brush pile. And then they can kind of make a little, just a little bit of a turn to get up the alleyway. So I think, I think they'll be okay uh, and be able to make that transition pretty smoothly. And uh, the other big change that we made this year is down this west side of the field is a is a scope of woods and brush probably 50 50 feet deep from the edge of the brush and the woods here all the way over to the fence line that's on the other side and what I had done last year was use this netting and I would run it all up the side of that brush to keep them from going into that brush because I didn't have a way to get the cross paddock fencing, the, the, str the strands, all the way over to that other fence. If I just stopped at the edge of the brush, they could go into the woods, go around the end of my paddock fence and get into the next paddock that I didn't want them into yet. So what we've done, and you probably can't see, I've got little flags in the woods there. I have gone through with hedge trimmer and, and bush hog, bush hog, chainsaw, and cut a path through there where I can come off this midline with my reels and go all the way across the field and tie onto the western fence all the way through the woods there. So what that's gonna let me do is not have to use these along that brush line. And several pluses to that, it's gonna make moving paddocks a whole lot easier. Anytime I don't have to deal with this, mess with this netting, it's a good thing. Uh, it's good stuff, but it's pain. Uh, aggravating to move sometimes I lose my religion um, the other thing is when they've been in this field in the past because I had them blocked off from the brush in the woods over there there was very little shade that they had they had this brush pile when they were down here in this paddock and then there's a couple of poles and there's one little tree out in the middle of the field and that was it that's all the shade that they would have and uh, so this is going to allow them to have a place to go in and get out of the sun when they want to. And and actually they can there's some they'll get some browse over there too with the bushes and the leaves and stuff. So uh, it's gonna be easier for me. It's gonna be better for them in several ways. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start in the next two or three days down in that paddock on the north end, we're gonna move our way south. And once we get finished with this, we'll come back over here to our east side of the field. where the pond is and we'll start our rotation from here going north and uh, and so maybe this will help understand the sort of the geography of this place so so here's our midline this is the western part of that field this is the eastern part of that field and those woods over there 
if you go about the distance from from this midline over to the woods go that far again that's where the new fence is that we just recently put up and it runs all it runs the full length of this field north and south so so the size of this field right here is duplicated in the woods over there it's just all woods and that's where they've been for the last several weeks and i've been showing y'all the footage of them kind of cleaning up the brush underneath and that's that's going to help us begin to thin that out and, and turn that into to pasture it's hard to imagine that ever looking like this and i don't know that we'll ever actually try to get it that clean because i kind of like the idea of what they call silva pasture which is a mix of of trees in with your pasture but it's open enough that the, the grass gets enough sunlight to uh, to grow and uh, it can make a good pasture gives them plenty of shade you've got the trees so it's pretty just to look at and so we'll kind of see how that goes as we as everything unfolds but it is uh well it's been a long wait to get through that drought last fall the drought even though it's over uh even though the drought's over i can still see the impact of it uh, we've had a good bit of rain this winter and already this spring but this field this little this specific spot right here is nowhere near as filled in i mean it, there's some there's some tall grass in here uh and the clover's starting to come in good i mean it's it's fine but at this time last year this was completely different looking. It was much more lush. It was very even and it was very filled in. There was no gaps in between uh, the different forage. So drought has a pretty big impact. It takes time and I'm, I'm sure that wind is killing y'all. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it was pretty calm this morning, but now the wind's picked up. So anyway, we're ready to go. Glad to get them back out. They'll love it.